Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Flink Forward, brought to you by Data Artisans. This is George Gilbert. We are at Flink Forward, the user conference for the Apache Flink community, sponsored by Data Artisans, uh, the company behind Flink. Um, and we are here with Shuyi Chen uh, from Uber. And Shuyi works on, on a very important project, which is the CalSide Query Optimizer, SQL Query Optimizer, that's used uh, in Apache Flink as, as well as several other projects. Why don't we start with uh, Shuyi, tell, tell us um, where, where CalSide's used and, and its role. Uh, CalSide is uh, basically used in the Flink table and SQL API uh, as the SQL parser and query optimizer and planner for Flink. Okay. Yeah. So um, now let's let's go to Uber and talk about um, the the pipeline or pipelines you guys have been building, and then how you've been using um, Flink and uh, and CalSite to to enable the SQL API and the what, the table API. Yeah. Um, Sort of what, what workloads are you are you putting on that uh, platform or on that pipeline? Yeah, so basically I'm the, the technical lead of the uh, streaming platform, processing platform in Uber, and so we uh, use Apache Flink as the stream processing engine um, for Uber, and basically we build two different platform. One is the called Athena X, which uses Flink SQL. So basically, it enable user to use SQL to compose their stream processing logic. And with like, uh, we have a UI, and with one click, they can just deploy the stream processing job in production. When you say UI, did you build a custom UI to take essentially a, a, turn it, a, a business intelligence tool, so you have a visual way of constructing your queries? Is that what you're describing, or? Yeah. Or so it's similar to like uh, how you compose your uh, write your SQL query to query database. We have a UI for you to write your SQL query um, with uh, all the syntax highlight and all the uh, hint uh, to write a SQL query so that even the data scientist and also non-engineers in general can actually use that UI to compose stream processing log jobs. Okay, give us an example of some applications because this sounds like yeah. It's a high-level API, so it makes it more accessible you know, to a wider audience. So what are some of the things they build? Uh, so, for example, in our each team, Uber each team, they use the uh, SQL API to, as the stream processing um, tool uh, to build their restaurant manager dashboard. Uh, uh, restaurant manager dashboard. Okay. Yeah. So basically, the data live, uh, the log live in Kafka, get real time stream into the Flink job, which it's composed using the SQL API, and then that got uh, stored in the OLAP database, uh, Pnote, and then the, when the uh, restaurant owners open the restaurant manager, yeah, that um, they will see the dashboard of their real time earnings and everything. Yeah. And okay. with the SQL API, they no longer need to write. Flink job. They don't need to like use Java or Scala code um, or do any testing or debugging. It's all SQL. So they, yeah. And and um, sort of what's the SQL um, coverage? You know the the, the SQL semantics mm -hmm. that are implemented in the in the current CalSite engine. Uh, so it's about like basic transformation, projection. And like window, like hopping and tumbling window, and also join, uh, and group by and having, uh, and also not to mention about the like event time and road time, uh, uh, processing time support. And and you can shuffle from anywhere. You don't have to have the the join sort of. You don't have to have two partitions with the same, you know, join key on on one on one uh, node. You can have arbitrary, the data placement can be arbitrary for the partitions? Uh, this, 
Well, the SQL, SQL is declarative, right? And so once they, the user compose the logic, the underlying, the, the planner will actually take care of uh, how, the, how to key by and how to group by everything. Okay, yeah. because the reason I ask is many of the early Hadoop-based MPP SQL engines had the limitation where you had to co-locate the partitions that you were going to join. Uh, that's the same thing uh, for, for Flink. Oh. Yeah, but it's just the SQL part is to take care of that. Okay. Um, so you do describe what you do, uh, but underlying it get translated into a Flink program that actually will do all the co-location. Oh, it redoes yeah. it for you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now the, they, they don't even need to learn Flink. They okay. just need to learn the SQL. Okay. Yeah. Now you said there was a second platform that, that Uber's building on, on yeah. top of Flink. Uh, the second platform is the, uh, we call it the Flink as a service, as a service platform. So the motivation is we found that SQL actually cannot uh, satisfy all the advanced need um, in Uber um, to build stream processing due to the reason, like for example, they will let you call out RPC services within their stream processing application or even chaining the RPC call, so which is hard to express in SQL. Uh -huh. And also when they are having a complicated DAG, like a workflow, it's very difficult to debug individual stages. So they want the control to actually to use the native Flink data stream API or data set API to build their stream or batch job. Is the data set API the lowest level one? Uh, no, lowest? it's on the same level with the data stream. So it's one for streaming, one for batch. Okay, oh, data stream, and then what, the other was table? Data set. Oh, data set, yeah, data stream, data level. set. Yeah. And, and is, there's one lower than that, right? Uh, or yeah, the, the, the lower, the lower that there's a one node API, but usually uh, normal, most of the people don't use that, oh, that so API. Oh, so that's systems programmers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so so the, tell me, so who is using, like what type of programmer uses the data stream or data set API, and, and what do they build at Uber? Uh, so for example, um, in one of the talk later, uh, there's a, a marketplace team, marketplace dy dynamics team is actually uh, using the platform to do uh, online model update, machine learning model update uh, using um, using Flink. And so basically, they need to take in the model that is trained offline and do a few like group by um, like time and location, and then apply the model and then incrementally update the model. And so are they? Are they taking like a window or a, a, a window of, of updates and then updating the model and then somehow promoting it as, as the yeah, yeah, yeah. candidate? Some, or? Yeah. yeah, something similar, yeah. Okay, that's interesting. And, and um, what type of, are there, so are these the data scientists who are using this API? Uh, well, data scientists are not really, it's not designed for data scientists. Oh, so they're, they're just doing the models off, they're preparing the models offline, and then they're being updated in line on the stream, the stream processing platform. Yes. And, and so it's maybe data engineers, um, data engineers who are essentially updating the features that get fed in and are continually training or yeah. updating the model. Yeah, basically it's an online model update. So as Kafka event comes in, continue to up refine the model. Okay, and and so as you as as Uber looks out a uh, couple years, what what sorts of things do you see adding to one of these either of these pipelines, and and it, do you see a shift away from the from batch and request response type workloads towards more you know continuous processing? Yeah. Uh, yes. Actually, yeah, we do see that trend. Actually, the um, that. Um, before becoming the tech lead of stream processing platform team in Uber, I was in Marketplace as well. And at that point, we always see there's a, a shift, like people would love to like, use stream processing technology to actually replace some of the backend, normal backend service applications. Tell, so long me, as, yeah. tell me some examples. Yeah, for example, um, so to, uh, so in our dispatch uh, platform, we have the need to actually shard the um, shard the workload by, like for example, riders uh, to different hosts. 
um, to process. For some of compute, like uh, say ETA or compute some of the time you know average, right? And this this is before done in backend services and like say use our uh, internal distributed system things uh, to actually co do the sharding. Yeah. But actually with Flink, this can be just done very easily, right? And so that actually there's a shift that I mean those people will also want to adopt stream processing technology and so long as this is not a request response style application. So the, the key thing, just to make sure I understand, the, it's that um, Flink can take care of um, the distributed joins, um, whereas when it was a sort of a database-based uh, workload, um, a DBA had to uh, set up the sharding, and now it's, it's uh, sort of more transparent, like our, it's, it's more um, automated? Uh, I think it's, um, it's more of the support, like, right? So if before people writing backend services, they yeah. have to write everything. The state management, the sharding, oh. and everything. They need to oh, it's not even database based. Yeah, it's, it's not database, yeah, it's, oh. not, it's real time. So, so we, they have to do the physical data management. Yeah, yeah. And Flink takes care of that now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, got yeah. it, got yeah, it. Yeah, that's not, for some of the application, it's real time, so we don't really need to store the data all the time in the database. Got so it. it's usually keep in memory and somehow get snapshot. But uh, we have, for a Long more backend service writer, they have to do everything. But with Flink, it has already built in support for like state management and all the like sharding, partitioning, yeah. and the, the time window uh, aggregation primitive, and all, it's all built in. And they don't need to worry about we implement the logic and we architect the system again. And so again. it's a new platform for real time. It gives you a whole lot of services, higher abstraction for real time applications. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. With that. Shuyi, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to call it a day. Um, this was Shuyi Chen from Uber talking about how they're building more and more of their uh, real-time platforms on Apache Flink and using uh, a whole bunch of services to complement it. We are at Flink Forward, the user conference of data artisans for the Apache Flink community. We're in San Francisco, this is the second Flink Forward conference, and we'll be back in a couple minutes, thanks.